I'm Father Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life. Welcome to Defending Life. I'm joined by our co-host and Associate Director, Janet Morana. And today, our guest is Father Tad Paholchik, who is the Director of Education for the National Catholic Bioethics Center. Father Tad, good to have you with us. Thank you for having me, Father Frank. You're welcome. Thank you, Father Tad, for Thank joining you. us. Now, we first met over a seafood lunch up in uh, the Northeast, uh, in your diocese of Fall River, years ago, uh, before you actually got your position currently with the Bioethics Center and before you uh, began traveling as you are now all throughout the country and around the world as well? Yes, around the world as well. Tell us how you, how you got into this and uh, what the issues are that you've been speaking about. Well, my background before becoming a priest was in the uh, biological sciences. So I had studied uh, neuroscience and had an interest in areas of cell biology and so on. When I was later in the seminary uh, and, and Dolly the Sheep was cloned, that was sort of a trigger event for me to pursue this area of bioethics more intensely. I realized that when she was cloned, this was going to open up a whole new series of complex questions mm -hmm. that were going to require a certain amount of scientific expertise as well as the moral vantage point and wisdom of the Catholic Church in order to be able to discern how one should use the science in a way that safeguards human goods and works to the advantage and not the exploitation of man. Mm -hmm. So the National Catholic Bioethics Center, tell us a little bit about that. Well, the National Catholic Bioethics Center is uh, now based in Philadelphia. We are a, uh, a group that is focused on dealing with a lot of these modern bioethical issues and controversies. We have a number of publications that we prepare. We have a regular quarterly uh, as well as a newsletter that is sent all over the world. Uh, we also deal with current controversies and issues as they arise and we're also involved with a great uh, a good number of consultations mm. where people can contact us through our website with specific questions uh, about bioethical areas that they're not certain about and we will reply to them they can also call by telephone and we uh, will address their questions in person uh, we have somebody who rotates through and regularly provides these consult services. I know it's a great resource for the clergy uh, and uh, and also for government, isn't that the case? You, legislatures and even in Washington, I believe, you've had the opportunity to uh, give some testimony before committees. Yes, that's correct. We, uh, I mean, you mentioned clergy. We do a lot of clergy formation days mm -hmm. and in terms of the political arena we offer our services uh, when there are legislative hearings in various states that are for example looking at the possibility of funding stem cell research and they need witnesses on both sides uh, then we will often send somebody to participate in those hearings and it really um, you know provides another side of the debate that often doesn't get well enough articulated in those legislative settings do you get people uh, sometimes in some of these hearings a little bit puzzled at to seeing a, a priest and a scientist all wrapped up in the same person? Definitely. <laughs> Usually they expect them to be separate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite, a, quite an amazing thing, really, to see how people react to me when, uh, when I appear in some of these venues. There's certainly uh, a, a good deal of interest and attention that comes because of this fact and because of this unique combination. Mm. I'm still not sure that with some of the legislators, you know, one is actually able to penetrate their armor, so to speak. Uh -huh. Some of them are very difficult to actually reach, even with very sound argumentation. Yes. But nonetheless, we have to, you know, do our best in that in that arena. Exactly. Let, let's talk about that a little bit more. In other words, the relationship between uh, faith and science, between the church and, and research. Uh, some people have the idea, especially when it comes to these issues of stem cell research and cloning, that the church is against research, that the church is somehow against the progress of medical science or even sees it as a threat to the faith which we preach. Yeah, I think that's a very common misconception. It flows from a general sense that there's some kind of inherent tension between science and belief. And at the end of the day, of course, there cannot be any real tension between the two because God himself is the author of both. Science provides a different avenue 
or approach to understanding creation and a very powerful one especially when one recognizes the technological spin-offs that accrue uh, but there is no inherent tension between going into creation through that portal versus approaching it from another angle meaning through faith and through the insights of revelation and the two of them when they come together end up providing a very beautiful kind of complementarity exactly. and the catholic church has no fear of science at all but really recognizes that science is something that is afforded us by god as a means to the betterment of mankind if it is used with the appropriate ethical discernment science is a great power that can also be used in in troubling uh, and in uh, exploitative ways but mm -hmm. it's its power when it is put within this broader context of an ethical framework it becomes something that is very very powerful and very uh, good in the service of, of mankind now the issues that we want to talk about in this show and in a subsequent program where we'll also have you on is uh, are, are those of stem cell research and cloning and Janet I know we've talked on the road with so many people around the country who have some very very basic questions about what these things are start us off with some well, of the things you know, people want to know. Part of the problem is Father we have to take back the debate or the language so to speak we're letting it get away from us because the average Catholic or even citizen out there thinks the church is against stem cell uh, research and I always point back no 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 we're against embryonic but not adult stem cell but maybe what you could do is help us understand what is the difference scientifically and, and then connect the dots morally because that's where the other side is getting us trapped you know they parade the Hollywood stars up there you know Michael J Fox and people who have certain illnesses and say we just need this you know embryonic stem cell research and uh, so maybe you can help clear yeah, it up for us a little. I think you're, you're absolutely right, Janet, that uh, there's really this sense that the Catholic Church is opposed to stem cell research, meaning just using that term generically. Right. And what I think we have to do to help people with this is to point out there really are four major categories of stem cell research. The first would be embryonic, where you destroy a living, growing, embryonic human being in order to get stem cells and it's true that if you require that kind of an approach to science the church will always oppose that it requires that intentional decision to exploit a weaker member of the human species so embryonic stem cell research understood in that sense will always be objectionable but then you have another category of stem cell research which involves taking stem cells not from embryos that are about a week old but from fetuses and these fetuses are from one of two sources either from an abortion which of course would be unacceptable or from a miscarriage a natural uh, loss of the pregnancy under those conditions if you got the permission of the parents it would be acceptable to use stem cells from those fetuses it would be something like an organ donation from their recently deceased child and that would be perfectly acceptable um, then the third category would be the umbilical cord stem cells and this is after the baby is delivered you have the umbilical cord which contains a lot of blood and they can remove that blood and isolate these umbilical cord stem cells that are very very useful and very powerful in treating patients and again no objection to using those cells because as you know umbilical cords are typically thrown away right. after